Rick back at the naturopath. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Before we jump into this video, don't forget at the end of the video, you can download some free resources that I've created just for you. The Candida Diet and Cleanse Starter Guide, the ultimate Candida uh, shopping list, the diet shopping list, and also the Candida, Candida Symptom Tracker, which you're gonna find very useful. So these are all for free. So at the end of the video, just jump into yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies and you can, down, you can download these things at no charge at all. If you have any questions, remember you can always ask those and either I can get back to you or the team. So thanks for tuning in and we'll catch up with you at the end of the video. Back in Atropan, thanks for coming back. Let's talk about foods that make you go to the toilet, that make you poop, okay? Foods that help regulate bowel motions. So, as you can imagine, after practicing for so many years, how many people I've seen that had problems doing number two? They just couldn't go to the toilet. You know, I've seen this with so many people over the years. I've helped in a tremendous amount of people having a bowel motion. That's a great thing to do, it really is. Now, I don't care what job you got, you could drive a truck or fly a plane, or, uh, but a lot of people over the years have said to me, you got a weird job talking about bowel motions all day? Well, not really. I mean, I could be talking about trimming aircraft wings or, you know, shooting missiles out of planes, whatever, but I don't, I talk about bowel motions, that's what I do, I love it, it doesn't worry me, okay? We all have bowel motions, so, and we all need to have good bowel motions. So listen up, because what I'm going to tell you is stuff that I've learned over many years from different people. My favorite patients have always been the elderly, particularly people close to 100, and I've had lots of them over the years. I've kept a lot of files of very old people, and we're talking between 95 to 105. 100, I think 103 was my oldest patient. And I found a pattern runs through a lot of the older people in terms of what works and what doesn't work. This is sort of my own personal studies I did with old people. And I made a lot of mental notes. I think the chief food I found that many elderly people eat, that probably a lot of you young guys and girls don't eat anymore, is actually called oats or rolled oats. Now, many people don't eat this anymore. And if they do, it's in the form of cookie, probably with some um, corn syrup in there or something, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about steel cut oats or whole rolled oats like whole not that fine chaff powder they sweep off the floor and put in little packets that you can rip open and put in your microwave in a cup you know that's you know throw that away give that to the guinea pigs but don't eat that all right but we're talking whole rolled oats whole unprocessed so these are flattened i've got a tiny little mill uh, myself that i put groats through like whole oats and flatten them so unless you've tried whole oats fresh that have just been milled uh, cooked you've got no idea how nice oats can taste so this is my being my breakfast now for probably since i was breastfeeding i'd say or way back i've always eaten oats every morning and i will continue to do that old people eat oats and a lot of them they have oats in the morning now that could be in the form of a muesli with yogurt or with oat milk or goat milk or cow milk or whatever milk you want dolphin milk i don't care what milk you use but some milk with you know i don't have any milk in my diet i just have plain pure water so i cook oats in pure water usually a bit of cinnamon in there and then i'll put probably a good tablespoon of honey on that and that's my breakfast usually with a big handful of raspberries or blueberries on top so when you eat like that every day you don't have a problem with pooping you're pooping every day. In fact, you're pooping two, three times a day because then at lunch, I'll have a salad or vegetables or a soup and I'll repeat the same thing at night. And so pooping for me, it's, it's as easy as ABC and it should be for you too. So oats is a good one. I'll tell you another one. Try and get into the habit of every single day for the rest of your life, every day, seven days a week, to eat at least one piece of fruit every single day now when i say a piece of fruit we're talking maybe a small kiwi fruit we're talking maybe a small banana we take we're talking maybe you know an apple or a pear pears or apples are some of the best foods you can eat for the gut so just cut that apple or pear up into pieces and eat it with peel and everything i eat the core the seeds the whole lot the only thing i throw away is a stalk 
So I've always encouraged people to eat the core. Oh my God, it's got cyanide in it. You're telling them to eat seeds, they'll die. Someone's saying as they're drinking their Coca-Cola or with a cigarette with their cell phone in their hand, go away. I get tired of these people who tell me all this, you know, creates holes in your intestines and nightshades kill you and gluten makes you, you know, homosexual and all this stuff. I'm so sick of to my back teeth of all this stuff I'm reading online. All these people come up with these weird theories on what you should and shouldn't be doing. It's up to you to decide what you want to eat. Rolled oats, okay, may contain gluten because it's packed on the same machine. Oh, I can't eat, I can't eat oats. I'll wake up weird. I'll have three years when I wake up or something. Oh, people go all weird when they think there's gluten in something, you know. And then next thing they think, oh, I better go and get my chicken nuggets. I'm hungry. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on out there. Huh? Rolled oats, fruit. Fruit's one of the best. Fruit makes you toot. Yes, it does. You will find if you eat like several pieces of fruit a day. But if you eat as much vegetables and fruit as I do, you hardly pass any wind at all because your gut is used to that level of fiber and fruit sugar. It's not a problem, right? It's whatever your gut is used to. So the fruits we talked about, the porridge we talked about, but the key one is water. You're not really going to get far without liquid in your gut. So you really need to become a water drinker, not just in the hot months, but in the cooler months too. I've got a dear friend who did a PhD in agriculture specializing in um, irrigation. And he said to me something very interesting. He said, Eric, he said, everyone waters their garden in summer, but no one waters their garden in winter. They all think that the rain's going to come down and water everything. He said, but... You go outside, poke around the soil, see how dry it is when it's not raining and your plants are still growing. And I said, man, that's the same as humans. No one drinks water in winter. Everyone drinks water in summer. They think, oh, man, I'm sweating. I need a drink. I'm thirsty. But you know what? Your body's thirsty in winter too. Your body's thirsty every day. So start the day with a nice big glass of tepid water or you know, room temperature water with a bit of lemon juice in it. That's a fantastic way to get the bowel working. Lemon juice and water, grape, grapefruit juice and water. Now, we're not talking bottle stuff with sugar in it. We're talking fresh. Get a lemon, actually physically cut it in half and squeeze the juice into the glass of water. Very good. The more you drink water, the more you'll want to drink water. All right? Because you'll get used to what it feels like to be hydrated. It's a fantastic feeling. So porridge, fruit, water. What about legumes, lentils, chickpeas? I mean, just one small serving of lentils is over a third of your daily fiber need. When you get used to eating lentils, uh, you'll start to realize just how delicious lentils really can be. I make up all kinds of dal dishes. Dal is an Indian lentil dish. Dal Mukhani is one of my favorites. So the black dal, so the black lentil, red kidney bean, and then we use a chana dal, the yellow dal. They're all soaked. I soak them usually for about 36 hours. Chuck out the water once or twice, and then I simmer them for about a good hour. And I cook it with tomatoes and different spices, and it's a fantastic meal. You would swear it tastes like a beef casserole, but it's not. It's, a, it's actually a vegan dish. This is how you're not going to get constipation, right? So there are so many foods I could talk about. Lentils, seeds, nuts. Chewing, chewing, chewing is the big thing. Don't eat too much. And when you do eat, chew the hell out of it and drink water and you'll find you're not going to have a pooping problem. The key thing to look at also with constipation is the personality. What type of person are you? Because your nervous system has a very big effect uh, on the gut as well. So if you're a highly stressed person, if you worry all the time, constantly worried, constantly stressed, that usually means that drinking water is few and far between. You're going to grab whatever food you can get because you're more worried about problems than actually about eating. And then you go to the doctor because you're all backed up. So you see what I mean? It's not just the food. It's also the person. You have to think about that. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Things. It's Eric Backer again, the naturopath. I hope you enjoyed that video. Remember, go to yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies if you want to download my free resources I've created just for people like you. These are things I used in the clinic for patients and you'll find them very useful. It's the free candida diet, the cleanse. So it's a good introduction on how to set your program together. There's the ultimate candida diet shopping list and there's also the candida symptom tracker. 
yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies. Thanks for tuning in and subscribe. Thank you.